I am absolutely convinced that the spread of the message and devotion to the Divine Mercy is the greatest grassroots movement in the whole history of the Catholic Church. There has been no message after the Apostles so widely spread so quickly as the message of Divine Mercy and that is primarily not through the preaching of priests and bishops but by lay people experiencing what this message brought and spreading it by word of mouth to one another and evidently the Lord knew that this core message of Christianity will so grip hearts that they won't be able to keep the secret to themselves. And uh, I believe this is why we can truly believe in the power of the body of Christ, which is, for the most part, the laity, the people of God. And he sent all of us out as his ambassadors, as his apostles, those sent out to spread the message of his love in the world. Within the Holy Trinity, God is all love. But when God begins to act outside of himself, that word takes on a different title. It has a different name and it's called mercy. So as the Holy Father writes in his encyclical, mercy is love's second name. Love is the outgoing of persons towards each other for the other's good, as I mentioned in the homily this morning. And mercy is bending, though, to the most undeserving. That doesn't mean that we're bad. Undeserving points to the fact, first of all, that at one point we didn't exist. And so there was no obligation of anything to anyone, so to speak. And so by the very fact that we are, that we were created, that we were born into this world, is a great mercy of God. In fact, I, I love to repeat the words of St. Bernard of Clairvaux where he, when he says, mercy is the causing most cause of all causes. We know that everything has to have a cause and the cause why, why there is anything outside of God is mercy. The desire of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to pour out all their goodness upon someone. And the object of that pouring out is the human race. All of the universe was created so that we could exist and that God could make someone that wasn't to people, persons, who one day will share in his own nature, as St. Peter tells us, that we may be partakers of the divine nature. And this brings us to the point that all of us, all things that exist, operate according to their nature. Inanimate objects have their way of expressing their nature. Plants, animals also operate according to what they are constituted to be. And so we who are created in God's image and likeness are constituted to be like God. But a, but we have to grow into it. That life of God has to have a start, 
and then it has to grow and be brought to perfection.